Select 50, Fund Focus. I'm joined in the studio today by Cedric de Fonclair. He's the manager of the Jupiter European Special Situations Fund. Cedric, hello, thanks for joining us. Hello. Um, first of all, explain to us what a special situation is and, and, and where you look for them. Sure. It means two things for us. First, it's looking at companies which over time ought to grow faster than GDP. And second, it is making sure that we don't overpay for that growth. So we're looking for companies which growth expectations are mispriced. And if that's the universe of companies you're picking from, how does a company make it into the fund? We've got a fundamental approach, which means that we're meeting the management in companies in which we invest. And we're trying to have a broader view of the industry by meeting company competitors, suppliers, clients of those, so we can understand the shape of the industry. After, it's about understanding what is driving the business, what makes that business sustainable, so what protect their profitability, and what is the strategy of management? Are they willing to spend more money or return more money to shareholders? So capital allocation is also very important. And does the process lead you towards one sector particularly or one type of company? It is much more about company specific, particularly in your environment um, as it is today. So if I can give you an example, a, a con French listed company called Valeo, which operates within the automotive industry, Clearly, there's a lack of visibility about how many cars are going to be sold in China at the end of, towards the end of the year, and I've got no insight into that. But I know that this company, which is providing all the electronics in cars, being safety, communication, CO2 reductions, they're able to outgrow the uh, industry because penetration of electrical components within a car is growing year after year. It is about 30% today of the overall value. That will be probably 50% in a few years' time. And again, for that, you're not paying a very high valuation. So that's quite attractive for us. And the headlines from Europe have been quite negative for quite some time now. Um, you've, you've been investing all that time. What's it been like to invest in against this negative backdrop? And where do you see the opportunities and, and the risks in Europe from now on? Sure. Well. As often, Europe has not been very, very popular, and today is still very much the same. But what I want to say is, first, we don't rely and we don't bet on the macro here, because I don't expect or I don't, don't factor in any kind of economic support from the underlying environment in Europe. But by picking the right companies, I mentioned Valeo, but even looking at companies which offer something unique, like uh, Pandora, which provides affordable jewelry to people and clearly very successful retailer at the moment, they're clearly able to differentiate from other, other retailers on the streets and make very, very high growth. So that's by being selective. But again, I would say about the pessimism around, around European equities is that you have to put that in context. It's been now eight months of constant outflow from European equities. So clearly European equities are not that fashionable. It's been the world selling since 2008, and I believe there have been some improvements since then. So that's the kind of opportunity we're trying to take advantage of. Indeed, so the message is there's still opportunities out there. Very much at a stock level, yes. Cedric, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.